Mama ain't happy about them baby ducks being outside the pens. I went and herded them back in there too. So we got four baby ducks. So hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. Um, Today, I wanted to try to help some of y'all gardening. I know with squash, once they get grown and just start producing, squash bugs come along. Eat the roots up on the vine, down there, you don't even know what happened. You got this beautiful, healthy plant one day. Come out there the next morning and it's all looking like this and whatnot, you know, and it's gone. There ain't no saving it. They done cut the roots, cut the, the nutrient supply, whatever, off to the plant, it's dead. I'm gonna show you how to beat that. Uh, this is something that I experimented several years ago. I got a video like when I first started YouTube that I did on this. It's one of them where the phones turned up like this. <laughs> and uh, so it's, it wasn't a real good video. It hadn't had a lot of views. Nobody's really seen it. Uh, we're gonna redo that video. So let me show you what I used to solve the squash bug problem. Y'all, this, it's just granulated ink poison. It does not have to be this specific brand. I have used many different brands, several different ones. So what I'm going to do, and I ain't got my camera set up on tripod or nothing. I'm just kind of taking it around on the selfie stick. Let me, let me do something different here, though. We're going to see if that holds up for us for a minute. I'm just gonna pour this in this coffee can and I'm about ready for a new, oh, uh, and I've been pouring it on some ant beds. I, it really don't kill ants. I think they just eat it and come back for some more. Oh, uh, so what I don't use, I'll pour back in there. But I just wanted you to be able to see that this is just an old granulated ant poison. Oh, uh, this happens to be Spectracide brand, but Y'all, I have used several different brands. It all works just as well. So while I'm walking down here to the garden, to my squash beds with this, I know a lot of you thinking, well, I, I don't want to, don't want well, getting away from poisons. Don't put poisons on your plant. Y'all, uh, you got to fight this one way or the other. Uh, I don't like poisons on my stuff. I grow my own garden because I want to eat healthy. Uh, I want to be healthy. I don't want cancer, so I get all of that. This, you're not spraying it up on your fruit that you're eating. And y'all, plants don't really leach things up through a plant that's harmful to you. Uh, there's a study, and I was going to do a raised bed video and talk about all this. I have documented paperwork from several different colleges where I've in-depth studied about plants leaching things up, like treated wood. Penn State has got a, an article where they leached, they planted plants in arsenic-treated wood, planted plants, and tested it, and yes, it had arsenic in the plant, but it was the precise amount that is already naturally in the human body. So somebody that didn't like the treated wood companies and wanted to make this big hoopla, run with that and said oh it leaches it up well technically it did leach it up but not no more than you already have in your body so you're not going to leach things up so this you pour this around your plant you're not spraying something on the fruit if you spray something on your fruit yes it may soak that into that fruit and become harmful that's the part i don't like uh, and i go with all this y'all with a common sense approach i don't uh I don't have an agenda. I ain't trying to control no big companies and, and you know, I, I'm not making money off of nothing. So I just do what works. This is granulated ink poison. And y'all, all I do is, is you see my squash right here. I just sprinkle a little bit on each one of them. Now we've had, you see these a little bit yellow and some of this stuff is a little bit wilted right here. 
Oh, and I had to move some junk right here into my bed because I mowed my grass yesterday. Y'all, my yard, I got it looking, you know, I, I like to keep my yard mowed good. I seen some old folks, they have a pretty garden, and man, they weeds taking everything else in the yard. But now these are some of these uh, butternut squash. And I just sprinkle it. You want to put this right around where the roots are. And I'm just, each one of them, I'm just sprinkling a little bit. You ain't got to put a, a big, huge, now the leaves caught that. I got to dump it out of that leaf. <laughs> so anyway, just each one of these. And y'all, I'm still fighting snails. They're not snails. They're slugs. I, I, I apologize for calling them snails, I reckon. Not really. I mean... They all look the same to this old boy, but I did. Somebody told me that they, uh, you could eat the snail. And I, you might can. I, I just, it gives me the heebie-jeebies. Look at this in here. Boy, he's sad looking. I've struggled to keep some of these, man. Y'all, the slugs is just. And I know I need to order me some of them traps or whatnot, but y'all, really, I got enough <laughs> that I, I just seen replant them. Uh, if you get them up to a certain size, you're not losing them anymore. And y'all already got squashes down in some of these. And that's why I'm out here doing this. They just starting to produce. And I'm just putting a little of this around the roots. And what it'll do is it'll just kind of repel those. These right here, y'all, are yellow zucchinis. These things have done awesome. I had not uh, but see, like you get this on the on the uh, roots or, or on the fruit, and it'll just you know kind of go off of it, bounce off, whatever. It don't it don't sit on there and really poison you. And these right here, Mister Johnny Jimmy Honeycut, these yo squash seeds you sent me. I got, but I'll turn the camera around here just a second when I get through and I'll show you. I got baby striped squash on here. I hadn't eaten one yet. Hadn't eaten one, but they there. And then this, y'all, this is my zucchini. I need to come around and do a, and y'all, this is all in my no-till. Uh, I didn't have trouble with the slugs except in the no-till spots. They just, they live in this leaf litter if you don't do no till and y'all look the grass is taking my tomato row i got a whole row of tomatoes this is a side from two beds of tomatoes and i got enough up there that i started late to replant see my let me turn this camera around while i show you a few things i'm through putting this out i got this i think around every one of them plants set my coffee can down here See if I can show Mr. Jimmy Honeycutt one of his striped squash growing right under there. Look at that, that thing. Ooh, that thing's pretty. Y'all know you can eat these squash blossoms, blooms, like I'll show you one. I, I had never done it. Okay, but like right here, let me get on it. This, you can pick that right there and fry it. Now that kind of, I, I, I struggle with that idea because, uh, I be wanting to eat the squash that grows under it more than I do that blossom. They say they're good fried. Look at him. Have to let that count. Look up on here. These things are producing too. So that's the first time I've ever grown them. Walk right over here. I wanted to. I did a garden update other vi video the other day, and I didn't show in detail a lot of this stuff. And see y'all, I'm still these old weeds and stuff. And I'm sure some of them's probably medicinal plants. This is wild garlic. Hit it out. I let it grow. But y'all look. See them baby cucumbers? This is the Orient Express. They growing up this cattle pine whale. And y'all, this butternut squash is eating. Now look at that. I'm going to get banned on. Oh, look, hang in there. That was a volunteer. And a lot of times, y'all, volunteer stuff don't uh, produce real well. But these are my national cucumbers. And they are growing up this thing, but y'all, they struggle to grow up it. You have to watch them. They'll be all out everywhere. My running beans, this is my rattlesnake pole beans. Look, starting to bloom. 
So as soon as this dries, we've had like four inches of rain the last couple of days. I'm gonna get the old forward in here with the cultivators on there and try to go through this that I'm not doing no till. And y'all, I I still got a section like where I'm putting straw in this. I got cardboard laid down. I gotta finish this row. But I've gotta get my plow. I'm gonna try to plow. I don't know, I'm probably gonna run the hand tiller up this, I don't know. But anyway, I just wanted to show y'all how to beat these squash bugs. Y'all, I wanted to throw something else in this video right quick that I did. Oh, it turned the camera down just a little bit. Oh. And I'll explain. Y'all got on Amazon, ordered jar lids and flats. These 50 in this little box for large mouth because I don't have a whole lot of large jars. But... All right. Oh. I don't know. Some kind of. I don't know. They sent me some dear guests. Thank you for purchasing our products. I don't even know who. I got on Amazon and ordered all this. But look at here, y'all. This is flats. And. They just kind of mixed up. They stacked them like this. Y'all, I'm just going to tell you, you better start getting this stuff if you ain't already got it. I have a lot of it in stock. Now, this one, y'all, is a little bit warped. But the thing that I look at, when you're looking for jar lids, make sure this rubber deal right here, if this is a little bit warped, you can straighten it. Uh, unless it's kink. Now, if it's got a kink right in here, you want to discard it. These are not, they, this ring had a little bit of a bow on it. But y'all, this ring is not as important as this flat is. Because this is what seals. You can actually take this back off the jar once this is sealed. But this was not really expensive. I think this, and then right here, oh. Uh, I didn't even need the knife really for this. I ordered five boxes. There's 56 in each one. These are freezer bags. Y'all ready for garden season. I just wanted to share that with you right quick in this video. Just throw it in here. Uh, I would be getting this stuff. This is probably enough for me. I don't need them more. I'm not trying to hoard things. Uh, and I have some of it. But I picked up a whole bunch of jars out of an old building they was tearing down at my grand, my wife's grandma's. And uh, she had a bunch of old jars in there from way, way back when. Some of them were antiques like Atlas Mason and Kern Mason and stuff. Uh, but then they were a bunch of just slick, plain jars. They was mayonnaise jars. They had for, it had the wooden blue plate. It was, uh, I can't even think of the name of it, uh, Bama. Bama jars. And then uh, there was another one. But anyway, we picked all those jars up. They've got to be washed and clean. There's probably like a hundred of them. So this, th this, there is 240, I think, jars and lids in here. And then there's 50 in here. Then there's five of 56. Yeah, 56 bags in each one of them. That's more than enough to do what I'm going to do this year. Oh. Uh, but y'all, it's early right now for thinking about canning, but y'all, it will be on us before you know it. And if you wait till it's time to start canning stuff to try to get this, you may be surprised. I don't know that. I just know last year you wait till the time to do it, people was panicking. This year, it's gonna be worse. So get your stuff now. And I was gonna show y'all the banging that was going on. I don't think I can zoom with this side of my phone. But my mom and dad's down there, uh, right here, driving fence posts around their tomatoes. And they put a cattle panel on each side of their row of tomatoes. And then as that tomato grows, they raise it up and put sticks through that. There's a, like a tomato and then a cattle panel on either side running down the road. And they run sticks through it and prop them. And they can pull that stick out and move it up, whatever. They, and they, really easy for them. The, the work is right now driving that up but it's really not a lot of work it's a little bit of an investment one day i'll take you down there after they get through with it and i'll show you how they got it set up it works really good i just i hadn't invested in enough panels to do it that way 
I'll show you the way they do it though before long. Thank y'all for watching Spirited Outdoors. We'll see you next time. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all.